This is a Clark University podcast. There's the rule that before you make an audience cry, you have to make them laugh. And that's because, like, emotions are so interconnected with one another, and film is one of the best ways to bring that to light. The best films are the ones that stay in your mind, and that's usually because of the way it reached you emotionally or mentally. Film in itself, I think it's very hard to make it solely just entertainment. During COVID, I watched like a movie every single day, essentially. And I think one that kind of changed my mind about like what films could do was Roma. So it's directed by Alfonso Cuaron, and I just absolutely like fell in love with the cinematography of it specifically. And he did his own cinematography, which is like crazy to me. Like I don't understand like how you can handle so many things at once. He really imbued the film with this like prolonged sort of breathing kind of look in terms of the the cinematography. He's like known for using really long takes like where the shot lasts for like multiple minutes at a time and it's just mesmerizing. You kind of like forget that you're watching a film almost. I feel like film can really be a medium in which to show your identity visually and aesthetically in ways that you kind of couldn't with other other mediums. I definitely think uh, part of like the beauty of film like as an art form is that it's so long lasting um, and it really just encapsulates a moment, encapsulates a feeling and emotion um, and it can be viewed for years and centuries after. It's, that's really my favorite part about film and being able to get that small perspective and be able to look back on it years later. Gianni Pradhan Wong Aswe, Salote de Baba, Emily Haithwaite, and Annie Lynch know how enthralling film can be. Cinema provides entertainment, identity and expression, education, sometimes advocacy. These four Clark students have studied countless films as viewers. But this semester, they've gained a new perspective. These student filmmakers are just now finishing up two short film projects they've produced and directed in the last few months. Screen Studies professor Soren Sorensen has instructed two groups of students as they've worked collectively on original short film projects. Gianni directed and Emily produced the film Long Play. Salote directed and Annie produced a film titled Kill Your Babies. We sat down with these students to explore their inspirations for their creations and the larger role film plays in their lives. Here's Gianni explaining what it was like to direct long play. Communication is so key, and the ways that you manage that and the way that you handle that communication before arriving on set is really, really important. Like, we do so much preparation, it's kind of insane. Like, you kind of need to know your plan before you're there, and then I think it's okay to kind of deviate from that plan once you roll with the punches, like something goes wrong. Communicating with like eight people at once to make sure like you all are making the same film, that's really challenging, but also super fun and rewarding at the same time, especially when working with people who I love. Directing Kill Your Babies gave Salote a similar experience. Yeah, I completely agree with everything Yanni said. It's an extremely collaborative environment, which I think it being so collaborative kind of takes that worry and stress off of your own job a little bit because as much prep as you do, sometimes you get on set and things don't go according to plan or they just don't fit right and you want to make the best product that you possibly can. And so that's when like the director of photography might chime in and say, hey, I can like help out with this or the actors have their own input. And so you work with that. You really start to create a bond with your actors and with people on set. They do so much that we're all kind of on even ground. And so when you get to scenes that have to do with like action or gore or violence, you kind of put the actors above the script in a sense where you're like, okay, as long as you're okay with this, as long as you're fine, and even though this is a set script, like you're willing to just rewrite a whole bunch of things to make sure that while you're making the best product, everybody on set feels comfortable and safe and is ready to do their best work and have like the best mentality out there. But yeah, I think it's figuring out what your role is and how you can work with others while at the same time like keeping the boundary 
of what it is you're exactly meant to do at the end of the day. It's been a very collaborative and learning experience, I'd say. The work was challenging, but worth every hurdle. Here's Annie. So it would be sometimes like 10 people on set for a day, and trying to organize all that was something to get my head around. And I know me and Emily would have chats and we'd figure it out together. Um, but it, it, it was also that aspect of collaboration that was just so lovely about it. When we have our, our long days on set, it's draining, but it's also nice because it's a little family. And at the end of the day, I know that if something should go wrong, I can always count on somebody else to fill in. Or if, you know, we have a problem, we can fix it. I, I think that has really made the experience worthwhile, and I'm very glad I got to do it with this crew. Both films unfold with a sense of mystery. Here's a taste of the film's plots without any spoilers. Frankie, the main character, arrives at an Airbnb and finds the host already there. And she's sort of unaware that he's going to be there. And essentially there's like a confusion with like the booking. And it's kind of their relationship that takes place because she's being stalked. And so the mystery unfolds of like who exactly is stalking Rowan. Killing Your Babies is primarily focused on our main character, Dorian, who is an extreme crime podcast enthusiast. And so she goes out and tries to create her perfect murder. And we have like twists and turns that fall into our themes of long lost love and mystery and horror. It's hard to, to explain more about it without saying spoilers. Students found ample creative inspiration from specific directors and musical artists. We have like some shots of like envelopes or like the vinyl. And I feel like they're all very Wes Anderson-esque in both the editing and the cinematography. So I feel like that film is probably what I was thinking of when we were filming. I think uh, just upon reading the screenplay, we kind of got that sense of like playfulness. Although it isn't like supposed to be a neo-noir slash noir, I think we really wanted to go for like a world of color because there's definitely like a sense of comedy to the main character Frankie. He's kind of like goofy and naive. He's like, he, he almost feels like he could be in a Wes Anderson movie. And we were drawn to sort of like the symmetry and the kind of visual motifs that Wes Anderson plays with. We have a lot of shots that I would say you could totally see are inspired by his film and visual style. When we first started making the film, I was in charge of the mood board and um, Annie had created a playlist to kind of figure out how the characters would evolve and what we should attribute to them in terms of like wardrobe and hair and colors and all that. Um, so I think music was kind of like my main inspiration for this film as well as colors. I remember, I think I had brought you, what was it? I had shown the, the weekends, the, his Starboy album. It just has very vivid colors um, and it's very, very dramatic in the lighting. And that was what we were kind of thinking of as inspiration. Um, not as much um, specific films. However, sometimes we're on set and we go, oh, that's such a Wes Anderson shot um, or yada, yada, yada. Um, but yeah, I think definitely the lighting was, was, was most like key to us in thinking about how to shape the overall design of the film. At the end of the day, as creatives, we all sort of imbue our own personal experiences onto the art that we're creating, no matter if it's like a TikTok or if it's like a feature film that's like seven hours long that's meant to like commentate on like capitalism and like the fact that every film is entrenched in this giant industry. But I think there's like that spectrum, but that everything on it can still be artful. Inspiration came from outside Hollywood too. Students found that classes here on Clark's campus influenced their view of the film industry, opening their eyes to new genres, and impacted their thoughts on art in general. When I took my first sociology class, um, I'm a sociology minor, and when I learned, wow, that outside external conditions can impact you and how you are on the inside, I was like, wow, that's literally crazy. <laughs> I think for me it was international cinema after 1960. Um, I learned about third cinema, which is essentially like a film movement created explicitly to sort of counteract like first cinema, which is Hollywood and commercial cinema. And it was basically like third world countries kind of taking 
up film as sort of a political weapon to kind of counteract colonialism and neo-colonialism, to kind of counteract all the sort of hegemonic institutions and powers that existed and used film in order to kind of challenge all of those ideas, which I think was like, like I was just like, what the, like that's insane that film can do that. National Cinema of India, uh, when I took that class, I had never watched any Bollywood films before and I very much fell in love with the mode of it um, because it's just so expressionistic and musical and it combined all of the things that I loved and it, it was worth it to sit through three hour movies. <laughs> The artist who did the Obama portraits, um, we were learning about him and how he would take kind of people he would see like on the street or someone he thinks would just be like cool to paint and he puts them within the world of like old master paintings and he uses those techniques along with like bringing to life the current person that he's painting um, and like the culture that they come from. It might just be like some dude walking down the street with like really cool swag and he's like, I'm gonna put that into a painting. And the fact that he got that all the way to like the Obamas was just amazing. To learn more about screen studies at Clark, visit clarku.edu slash screen dash studies. Challenge Change is produced by Andrew Hart and Melissa Hansen for Clark University. Find other episodes wherever you listen to podcasts. One, two, three. Clark! <laughs>